On June 16th, former IPS officer Rajesh Das was sentenced to three years in prison for sexual harassment. This man, who served as a special director general of police of Tamil Nadu, was accused by another IPS officer of sexually harassing her. Rajesh Das's conviction is being celebrated as a case where the law worked for the survivor. But at the same time, there has been no forward movement on yet another complaint of sexual harassment against another IPS officer from Tamil Nadu. In this week's No Filter, I will take you through these two cases. On 21st February 2021, Rajesh Das and other police officers were overseeing security arrangements for then Chief Minister Edapadi Paraniswamy, who was visiting the Karoo district. Rajesh Das told this female IPS officer that he can accompany him in his official car and she will be dropped off at Perambalu. The officer who belonged to a subordinate carder travelled with Rajesh Das. They went from Karoo to Namakal and around 7.40 pm they started towards Ulundur Pen. It is during this journey that she was sexually harassed. The woman who was distressed by what happened in the car got out of the car and then travelled towards Chennai in a different car. And while travelling towards Chennai, she filed a complaint of sexual harassment against her superior officer. Two years after she filed a complaint, Rajesh Das was convicted by a court. Now this happened despite the fact that he filed multiple petitions challenging the investigation, the jurisdiction of the court and even the trial. While the woman officer in Rajesh Das's case got some semblance of justice, another woman officer in Tamil Nadu has been waiting for her case to make some headway since 2018. This woman officer, who by the way is not an IPS officer but belongs to a lower rank, had filed a complaint in August 2018, alleging that Murugan IPS, who was the then Joint Director of the Directorate of Vigilance and Anti-Corruption or DVAC, had sexually harassed her. After this woman officer filed a complaint, Murugan stayed in the same position for 13 months till he was transferred out. The DVAC is a powerful department that deals with complaints against ministers and even sitting chief ministers. The AIDMK was in power then and perhaps they did not want any retaliation from Murugan. So an FIR was not registered immediately but an internal committee was formed. But the complainant went to the court saying that she does not agree with the constitution of this internal committee as one of Murugan's juniors were part of this committee. What followed was utter mayhem. The committee was reconstituted for the second time. This time, both the complainant and the Murugan opposed the committee. Finally, in October that year, the committee was reconstituted for the third time. In February 2019, the Madras High Court gave a judgment on the petition filed by the complainant and the court agreed with the complainant that the first committee was a complete mockery of justice. The court also made an important observation that the committee would have been made simply to frustrate the inquiry or to compromise or settle with the complainant. The High Court said that the IC's inquiry and a criminal trial can be held simultaneously, but Murugan got a stay on this within six days. Now, once the stay was vacated, things got even more complicated. The complainant said that the chairperson of the IC told her to forget about the incident. She again went back to court. And finally, in an unusual move, in August 2019, the court suggested that this case should be moved out of Tamil Nadu and it was transferred to Telangana. As soon as the case was transferred to Telangana, both Murugan IPS and the state of Tamil Nadu opposed this and a slew of litigations began again. By September 2019, the Supreme Court gave a stay on this transfer. Now, whatever I told you till now is frankly old news and a lot of people who have followed this case are aware of it. But what a lot of people do not know is that ever since the DMK government came to power in 2021, the woman officer has taken back her complaint asking for a transfer of this case out of Tamil Nadu, which means the Tamil Nadu police is now investigating the case and after so many months, a charge sheet has not been filed. I asked a lot of sources in the police department and they say that a sanction to prosecute Murugan has not come from the government. But others say that the delay is from the police department itself, that the investigation was delayed and that the file was not submitted to the Home Secretary's department. No one seems to have any clarity about how the delay was caused. So basically, this woman officer had been waiting since 2018 and she's been forced to go to court multiple times with petition after petition. 
So there are many differences that people point out between Rajesh Das and Murugan's case. One crucial difference is that in Rajesh Das's case, the survivor is also an IPS officer. So a majority of the IPS officers lobby actually supported her. And in that case, there are also many witnesses and CCTV footage available. But despite being an IPS officer, filing a complaint of sexual harassment against a senior officer was not easy even for her. What she told the court is that when she got into the car and she started traveling towards Chennai, she kept getting calls from Rajesh Das and other police officers. The most shocking aspect is that when she reached the Paranur toll gate, her car was stopped by a large contingent of police led by D. Kannan, who was the then SP of Chengalpet district. One police car, in fact, was stationed right in front of her car so she could not move forward. An inspector and a sub-inspector got out of the car. They took away her car keys. Then she was forced to talk to Rajesh Das on the phone and he told her not to file a complaint. When the woman officer did not relent, she was finally allowed to go. And it is in this journey back to Chennai that she filed her complaint. What I described to you now is the difficulty which a woman IPS officer had to go through to file a complaint of sexual harassment. But after she filed the complaint, everything worked like clockwork. The investigation went on, many IPS officers supported her. In fact, the Madras High Court had praised the investigating officer for his meticulous ways. The question that we need to pose to the DMK government now is that why is there no progress regarding Murugan's case? When will the government give sanction to prosecute Murugan? Or when will the government ask the police department why is there a delay in this case? So that's it from me on this week's No Filter with Dhanya Rajendran. And as I keep reminding you, do become a member of the News Minute. We have different options available for you on the website. Yes, we need your support to grow and thrive as an organization. But remember, you supporting independent media is also because you want democracy to thrive. Thank you very much.